You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was um in in North Carolina, and we was in North Carolina, and it wasn't we wasn't down there for visitation. Y'all know my mom had passed, and that's where she lived, and I was down there, um, just taking care of her arrangements and 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 the service and things like that. And we went out to eat one night because she lived in a small town, and there's not a lot of places to eat in her town, so. I didn't necessarily want Mexican food, but it kind of like was the only thing open. And we went the first night and this was right before they was about to close. And I'm like, yo, damn, like I'm hungry. And as we walked in, it was this like, like short Mexican dude. He comes up and he had the biggest smile on his face. And he, you know, was, was very nice guy. And he talked to us and he let us know like, yo, the kitchen's about to close, but we'll be open tomorrow. But because of his spirit and his energy, we was like, yo, you know what? Tomorrow we'll be back. And when tomorrow rolled around, got hungry, come dinner time, we went to that restaurant. And when we got there, again, this same man greeted us at the door. And he passes off to this waitress and she takes us and we go and we sit down. And you can see this guy because everybody who was walking in the door he was greeting. He had this big smile on his face. Then he'd go and he'd sit like in his little cubicle and he was just watching the restaurant and he was watching the wait staff. He was watching the bar staff. And every time the waiters would come up to our table, if they didn't pour our water, you saw him call them over like, yo, come over here. And two seconds later, they was coming back to our table pouring water, making sure that we had all the condiments right, making sure everything was perfect. And I was looking at this guy and I was saying to myself, like, this is a dude who this is not just a job for this man. He don't just come here and earn a wage and go home. There must be something more. And because he was such a good host, because he was such a good spirit, we went back again at least two more times. And when we went back the last time. We brought back like 12, 13, 14 people with us. And it was all because of this one man. And it turns out that this man was the owner. And this man being the owner, he wasn't just sitting back with his feet up somewhere acting like I'm the boss. He was the one who was on top of everything, putting in the most work. And it was clear that Although he owned the place, he just loved what he did. And he was the hardest worker in there. Like he was literally running circles around his staff. And I had to give it up on the way out. Like, look, whenever I'm back in town, I'm coming here. Not for anything else. The food was great. Yes, the service was great. Yes. But you, you got that secret sauce. Your work ethic is shined, but more important, the love, the love for the people, the love for your establishment, the love for the business. You just won yourself a lifelong customer. And this whole week, that word love has just been with me. Like it's just been on my mind. I couldn't let it go. Just, just love like i don't know i'm like yo wh why can't i shake that word and it's something about that word right because when you think about it it's the greatest gift that god has ever given to mankind that is the one emotion that it transcends all it transcends status it transcends gender it transcends geological location. It transcends death. And when you sit and you think about it, it's irrational. I don't know why I love what I love. I just love it. I love butter pecan ice cream. I could eat it every night if it was healthy. I just love it. I don't know why I love it. I just do. And sometimes 
we as human beings, we go outside of what God intended for us. Sometimes you don't just let yourself do or be what God intended you to be. By just following that simple word, I'm going to follow what I love. I'm not going to sit and write down all of the reasons why I love is right or why this opportunity makes sense or why I should be doing this or doing that because it looks and sounds good on paper. But instead, I'm just going to do what I love. And too often, we don't become successful in any area of our life because we miss the most important ingredient of them all. Do what you love. And it's really just that simple. So let me help to simplify it the best way that I possibly can because as I was sitting here and I'm thinking, y'all know I'm a faith-driven man. I'm God-fearing. And as I was thinking and I'm praying, I'm like, yo, God is love. Simple as that. God is love. And if God created the heavens and the earth and then created us in his image, then we, by default, should be able to create heaven on earth if we do it with love in our heart. And for some of y'all, you're wondering, why am I not successful? I work hard. I do all the things I'm supposed to do. I'm college educated. On paper, I look like I'm supposed to be making so much more money than what I'm doing right now. I look like I'm supposed to have so much more than I have right now. But you did everything for the wrong reasons. I know somebody right now, this second, a good friend of mine, I was talking to them. And she's a six-figure chick. She has a staff. She got a corner office. And I was asking her, do you love what you do? And her answer back to me was, no, but I'm good at it. You're good at it. If you're making six figures and you're good at it, just imagine if you were good at it and loved what you did. You would be a multimillionaire. And I told her, why don't you think about taking your skill set right now and combining it with something that you love? And watch your life go to the next level. And she looked at me and said, no, I can't do that. Because I'm good at this. And although I hate every minute of what I do, I know at the end of the day, I have a six-figure income coming in. Movers. Success. It's not predicated on just how hard you work. It's not predicated on just what sounds good and looks good to other people. But there is an intangible that I need all of y'all to sit back and say to yourself, am I doing this with the one thing that doesn't make sense to most people? It might not make sense to my parents. It might not make sense to my husband and to my wife. Am I adding that ingredient of love? And if you are, success, it's on the way. And it might take a while. But they say if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life anyway. It keeps you in the fight. It keeps you waking up. And taking that next step. When I was young, I worked, or I lived rather, with my grandparents. And I had the opportunity to see 
This couple who had 11 kids have been married for close to 50 years. First hand, show me what love really was. Neither one of them graduated high school, but they had something more. And as my grandfather would go out there and work two and three jobs, his wife, no matter what time he had to get up in the morning, was always up before him making his breakfast. She was always right there no matter what time he came home at night, making sure she served him dinner. She was always right there making sure that at the end of the day, this man knows I love him, him. And they celebrated close to 50 years of marriage before God called her home. And I'm saying this just as a point to say to some of y'all, yes, I'm sure that there were days with all those kids in the house that they had to choose between, do we pay the light bill or the rent? They had to choose between, do we buy clothes for our oldest children and pass them down year over year or try to buy all of the kids new school clothes? They had to do what they had to do. But that love was one thing. But then there was the work. Because there's a lot of people out there, yes, they might have love. But when you combine it with work, they worked at it. And they were successful. And I'm telling y'all, your success, even when you love something, it might not come overnight. They had almost 50 years before they were able to celebrate together and say, look what we have done with our lives. Some of y'all, it might take years and years and years, but that love again, it's irrational. It's just a feeling inside of you. It's like GPS. When you get on that road, GPS, I don't know how it works. All I know is that it does work. Sometimes that GPS is telling you, you have three, four, five, six hours on the road and it needs you, wants you to trust it with every turn, with every U-turn, with every stop, with every detour. And as long as you do it, you're finally going to get to your destination. It's the same thing with that love. That is that internal GPS that God gave us. If you just trust it. It might take you years to get to your destination, but don't give up. That thing inside of us, it will get you there. Year over year over year, you're a little bit closer. Even though you don't see your destination, it might be years out of sight. Trust it. It's that guiding light. We all have it. But most of us don't use it. So I'm telling you movers. Do it for the love. I don't know what it is that you're doing. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. But if you want to be successful. The most important part you cannot leave out. I don't know anybody on planet earth that has reached high level success. And didn't love what they do. Can you say the same about yourself? Can you look at that man or that woman that you are standing or laying next to day over day? Say, I love him. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm a ride or die with him through sickness and through health. Because at the end, we're going to build something together. Can you say that about that career you chose, that job that you're at, that business that you started? Do you love it? Because if you love it, success is going to come. It has to come. This thing was put in us. It is the most strongest and powerful emotion that anybody on planet Earth has ever known. We all have it. Trust it. Movers, do it for the love. Don't do it for the money. Don't do it for the promise of success. Don't do it for anything else. Do it 
because you love it and all those other things will fall into place. So to all my movers, this one I'm gonna keep short and sweet for y'all because somebody needs to hear that the track that they're on right now, nobody is supporting them. Nobody's standing by them. Nobody sees their vision. But you love it. Don't worry about that. Let this serve as validation that you are on the right track. Let this serve as validation that although every door that possibly can be closed in your face has been closed in your face. But you know, opportunity is about to knock. That door's about to open. I don't care what y'all think. Let this be validation that if you're questioning yourself, and you're thinking about throwing in the towel. If you're saying to yourself, this industry is not big enough. The opportunity is not big enough. The financial gain, it's not big enough. This is your validation. If you're doing it for the love, you're on the right track. The success is coming your way. The riches are coming your way. It's no other way about it. This is just the way the world works. Movers, I'll leave it there. Keep grinding, keep pushing, and keep making power moves.